I just want to talk about climate change for a second. I'm not sure if you know who David Attenborough is. He's from Britain and he's been studying the effects on the world for 93 years. And Netflix just did this incredible documentary profiling him talking about the changes that he has seen throughout his lifetime. And it's just amazing to me because 93 years ago, there were like 2.8 billion people on the earth. And when it all started, only 30% of the world inhabited populous areas, whereas 70% of the world was still wild. And you look at where we are today, and we now have double that amount of people plus, and now we're occupying almost 70% of the world and you start seeing how this imbalance starts impacting everything. And it's so interesting to me how when you can see this through his eyes and this very well-made documentary's eyes of how much things have changed, how people still won't believe that it's changing and how there's such a different song that's being sung when there's so much empirical science that shows the changes are happening. To me, it's just baffling. And it's also baffling to me. So David Attenborough comes always close to the top of the greatest revered Britons of all time. So maybe Winston Churchill is number one, but he is not close behind because all of his work using evidence to show the importance of climate change and its impact on, on the environment. So why is it when you see such strong evidence, might people not respond to it in the way that they should? It is because of these biases. And these biases are reinforced by the fact that sometimes climate change is a matter of identity and politics rather than science. So one great documentary on climate change was An Inconvenient Truth, and that was laden with facts and figures and evidence. But because it was about Al Gore, this made it seem like a Democrat versus Republican issue. So even if you're a Republican who is under, able to understand data and science and you're generally rational, now your identity feels threatened because you think, well, climate change is something that people like them believe and people like us, we should resist. And similarly, some other messages will come across. There was a message ridiculing Ted Cruz for being a climate change denier and saying 97% of scientists agree that climate change is man-made. But because you poke fun at Ted Cruz, then this might lead Republican supporters to stand up for Ted Cruz and stand up for the underdog. And this now seems to be something where even if you're backed into a corner because the scientific evidence is pointing in one direction, because this is not a debate about evidence, but ideology and whose side you are on, then people might tune out the evidence because their identity is something important to them. So then what is the best way to try to ensure greater climate literacy and climate knowledge is to disentangle the message, the evidence from the ideology. Perhaps sometimes resist the temptation to label the other side as uninformed or deniers or going against science, instead just present what the science is and what the evidence is without linking it to a particular political affiliation. Sometimes it might involve Republicans highlighting the importance of climate change. It might also highlight mean the importance of highlighting not just the causes, but the solutions. So if the solution to climate change is taxation and regulation, Republicans might be unwilling to accept climate change as real because they don't want the solution. But if instead the solution is innovation, ingenuity, capturing carbon and strong and deep geological formations, or launching some solar reflectors into the atmosphere to reflect the sun's rays, those are things which will be in accordance with Republican values. And that might cut through more than just presenting the facts. <laughs>